Well, hello again. Since our last meeting, I went ahead and installed two more terminal strips, one here and one down here. And again, I installed them with external star washers. Now, somebody might say, what is an external star washer? You've mentioned this before. Well, I'm going to show you. See this puppy right here on the end of this pencil? Get it down here and zoom in. That is an external star washer with the teeth on the outside. See it? And they dig into the metal. When you uh, tighten the nut down on the screw or the bolt, they dig into the metal. Now let me show you what an internal looks like. All right, there's the external I just showed you with the teeth on the outside. This is the internal star washer. Or some people just call them the outside and inside, all right? And on this nut right here, you'll see an external. And it's fastened, to, it's, you know, it's all part of the nut. There's a little flange they have there, and they, when they make them, the, the star washer's all part of it. Internal, external. Anyway, I decided to go ahead and locate one right here and one right here, in addition to the one we already had down here. And, you know, that was purely by choice. Uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you have to install terminal boards, uh, strips like this, that's, you're going to have to make the call yourself. You're going to have to decide where do I want to put it. Sometimes you can just install one at, at a, in a place that does not require a hole to be drilled, which is I, what happened here. I got lucky. There was a spare hole here. At least it looks like a spare. I may find out later it's not, but it's, it looks spare to me. And the same down here, another spare hole back in there, okay? So I went ahead and used what I had. Now, I could have drilled a hole, I could have drilled a hole here. I could have drilled another hole up here and put two terminal strips facing each other. But I figured, what the heck, you know, let's just go for it. But as far as best I can figure, those are two unused holes. I can go ahead and put my, my nut, put my screw, my star washer, my nut, <coughs> or my uh, lock washer, and then a nut on each one. Good continuity between all three grounds on this one, this one, and this one. Now let's take a look at our schematic and see, figure out what we're going to do. You'll recall I put all these pink dots on here to show that all of these contacts, have, all these points have to be connected together. All right, so what we're going to do, I think, is start. Let me zoom in a little closer here. I think we're going to start with this 150k resistor R3 and I'm going to try to connect it to this point here which goes up to pin 4 on the 47.2 and I'm going to try to connect it to these two points right here one of them goes over to the speaker field coil plug that we talked about last time and the other one will go up and connect to pin 3 on the 35 IF amp tube. So let's take a look at that 35 and see if there should be a stub there somewhere in this area here <clears throat> because these three tubes were connected together and then it came down and there should be some kind of a stub right here. Let's see if we can find it. We're looking for pin 3 on the IF amp tube 35. Pin 3, 1, 2, three there's the stub right there right there so that's the primary thing that we're now i'll probably extract that solder and put a nice new wire on there well, what am i going to do with it then well i'm going to try to run it across and connect it using this uh i may run it down to this one first and then run it across over to this terminal strip i don't know i got to figure that out as I go, and you would have to do the same thing. How are you, how's the best way to utilize a, a terminal strip? You will have to figure that out sometime if you ever use them. And, you know, you're bound to make mistakes and have to wind up taking the wires off and redoing them. Don't worry about it. So what? Okay? Now, this is my 150K resistor. I'm going to go ahead and connect it to this very first terminal right there. All right? I'm going to stick that baby through that terminal hole right there. And then I know all those points have to come back and connect to there. So I'll, I'll probably have to run a jumper wire between this terminal and this terminal, which enables me to use both of these. 
And we were only talking about four connecting points, uh, four wires that need to be connected. So there ought to be enough room to here and two there in addition to this resistor. Well, let's see if we can't jury rig that up here and get this stuff working so we can color in some more orange. Well, I guess my old eyes don't read so well after all. Uh, this wire right here that I said was coming off pin 3 of the IF amp is not coming off pin 3 of the IF amp. This is 1, 2, 3 of the first detector. It's not the same tube and same pin number, but it's the same electrical point because if you follow the wire down to the IF tube, you'll see that it connects right there. Pin one, two, three. Pin one, two, three. Same electrical point. Then it even goes up here. It connects to pin one, two, three. They just took it off the wrong tube that I mentioned. They didn't get it right. Why didn't they do that? I don't know. I can't explain such things. Well, while we're waiting for the old soldering iron to heat up so I can extract this wire, get the solder off that wire there, let's circle the contact points we're going to be actually connecting together here. Well, we're going to connect this one right here. We're going to circle it right there. We're going to connect this one together. We're going to connect this one together. And this one on up to pin four to right here. And we're going to connect over to our speaker plug. Okay. When we get done, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Must be wifey. All right, we've got all the contact points done uh, that I wanted to do for this particular segment. We'll, we'll do some more in the next segment. But what I've done here is we have connected pin 4 on the 47 tube, which would be right here, okay? And that pin 4 comes down, comes across, comes up, and goes over and connects to that speaker. Remember I showed you this last time, all that wire, just to go from here down to here. And we are connected to the speaker plug. So let's go ahead and color that in so we don't get confused on what we're doing here. Of course, if my hand would stop being so shaky. All right. And then we come over here. And we come down, okay? So that's all connected together. Mm, this pen sure is different from the original orange one, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, can't do much about it, but it'll it'll work. Fine point crap. <laughs> okay, that's connected all the way around to here. I want to make sure I got this really connected good, showing up good. So we don't have any confusion. Okay, that one's done. Now what we've done is I went from pin 3 on that tube. I took that old stubby wire off. We ran that across and connected it right here to this uh, terminal. You'll see that right there I put a little jumper wire back there. <clears throat> right down there at the bottom I, can, I soldered a jumper wire between this terminal and this terminal. Now so far I've only used this one on the terminal strip. This one is still available. So... I brought that wire from that tube pin 3, which is uh, right here, okay? I brought it down all the way across and soldered it right here to this 150K resistor. So let's get that in there. Let me see, we brought it down here from pin 3. Remember, same electrical point. That's why I covered that same electrical point business early in the rewiring of this chassis. So when we got to this point, you'd understand what I was talking about. Okay, we come down pin three, we come across, and what we're looking for is the 150K resistor, which comes down here. Oh, there, it connects right into that same line. And so does this now, okay? Comes across, 
and it connects into this right here. The 150 comes down. It connects into it. See how everything's beginning to fall to get together? Now these two over here we found out earlier. This one here and this one here and this one here. They were already connected together before we even started this mess. And you'll see that they're all got yellow lines on them. All right, we've got that connected to where it needs to go down to here to the speaker plug. Everything goes back to the speaker plug. And uh, let me see what else we got here. I think that's about it. This one, let me see if I forgot any here. Let me study it and I'll get back with you. Well, it looks like we got it all. Everything is connected to the same electrical point and I brought them all together on this terminal right here, most of them, okay? That was the, that was the quickest and neatest and easiest way I could figure to do it without putting a pile of wires other than what we already have. What we already have. Now, next time, I think in the next segment, we're going to try to hook up some of these other pink wires down here. Now we only have, well as far as I can tell, we only got this one, this one, and this one. And we're going to have to attach a ground to this end of the candle and resistor structure that we set up, okay? The resistor bank. So the next segment, we'll come back and do these right here. Do you all understand what I did here? I just figured out a quick, easy, short way to connect everything together and hook them to one terminal on, uh, on, the, uh, on the terminal strip, on one solder point right there. All right. Now we can connect some more, hopefully, to this second one. If not, we might be able to use it for something else in the future. I don't know. Everything's soldered up. Everything's good to go. All right. We'll see you in the next segment. What I'm going to do is close up shop here tonight, and we'll pick this up tomorrow, actually. It is the next day, and I feel a whole lot better, a lot more rested. I'll probably be bushed by the time I get done with this video. <laughs> Normally late at night, I, I peter out quick. We were going to go ahead and hook up these three items here to include this capacitor, but I decided I have, I have had a change of plans. The reason being is we have too many loose ends. We have to tidy up some loose ends. We're beginning to lose track of what's going on here. I don't want that to happen. Uh, for instance, this 500k resistor has to be connected here. It comes out of here. This It came down to here. You'll see it's yellow, but we never did connect through the 500k resistor to between the 75 and the R11, which is a 1420 ohm resistor. we got to get that connected up. Now, that resistor is this one right here. It's kind of been dangling out there all this time, just sort of dangling. Now I'm going to add a, a, a wire to it, put some uh, heat shrink around it, and then run it down and connect it right here between the 75 ohm resistor and the 1420. So that has to be done. That's, that's, that's imperative. We, I'm tired of looking at that thing. It's time to get her connected up, okay? What I'd like to do is get all the wires, the necessary wires connected to this resistor bank and then just start soldering those resistors in, finally, after all this time. They're just kind of loose and floppy right now, as you can see here. Okay? I haven't soldered any of them in yet. Well, I may have soldered this end. And I may have soldered this end, but all the rest are loose, all right? Now, <clears throat> which brings us to our next little problem here, this ground on the end of that resistor bank had to be grounded. We've got, we haven't grounded that yet. So what I did was to save some time, I just took a wire, a black wire, and I soldered it right here to the end of the resistor bank at the end of the 75 ohm resistor. Right, uh, where are, let me find it here. Let me see here, I got some stuff hanging everywhere, goodness. Right here right at the end of the 75 ohm resistor, that ground, I connected that wire, that black wire right there, I ran it over to the pin, this pin on the speaker plug. Well, why did I do that? Well, because I needed a ground. And guess what's connected there, if you remember, is that wire coming out. See that cloth covered wire? It comes out and it comes around and it goes to ground right there. I've got it all hooked up with a nice external star, uh, um, star washer, okay? So this is ground, that's ground, and that's ground, and they're all connected together. 
All right, good. So we took care already of our ground. That's no big deal. I mean, anybody could have done that one. Let me back up here. So what's left? Well, soon, I think what I'm going to do first is go ahead and connect up this 500K resistor. So let me get that soldered up. Let me get a piece of heat shrink slid up there. And I'll go ahead and uh, shrink it down probably tomorrow when I get some time. And then we have two other things. Well, actually, we got three other things we want to do, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right. All connected up. Don't, don't forget to clean your solder joints, though, after you've soldered them. Even up here, where I spliced that wire on. Come on, focus up, baby. Even where I spliced that wire on, clean those solder joints, too, okay? With alcohol, get that flux and crap off of there. All right, now all I have to do is shrink that down, and that'll be done. So let's go ahead and uh, put a little orange on the old schematic here. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, we have connected up the ground yes we did and we have connected up from here let me see make sure it's in the camera through the 500k resistor to right there between those two resistors and the resistor bank is that cool okay so what's the next thing we're going to do we are going if you look at here just make sure you didn't lose track here this side of the volume control and this side of the volume control have not yet been connected. So we need to connect this side over. Now we're talking the volume control, we're talking this baby right here, okay? All we've connected so far is the wiper. You'll see that that terminal right there and that terminal right there have not yet been connected. So we're gonna have to run two wires all the way down here somewhere. Well, the high side of the pot, here's the low side. The high side of the pot is gonna go between the last two resistors on our resistor bank between the 1420 and the 670 which means let me see here's the 1420 here's the 670 although I have a 680 we have to connect it right there right between them okay the high side is just nothing but a wire from from the high side of the pot down to there now the low side will go to the very end over here which will be right there and we'll probably connect that now remember I, I strapped all these together so I can connect it to here let me zoom in a little closer see where I strapped all those together with that jumper wire that's why I did it because I knew sooner or later we were probably gonna have to solder another wire on here sure enough we are so the low side will go here the high side will go, where did I say it would go? Between the 1420 and the 670. Uh, right here. So apparently we only have to hook it right here and right here. Just two wires from up here. Piece of cake. Anybody could do that. Let's get that done. Well, there we go. The high and low side are all the way down and connected where they're supposed to go on both sides of that resistor just like you see it right here both sides of that resistor okay now this is a classic case of uh, you'll remember that we had to go through all this wire and everything to get down here to the speaker plug where all it really was was a, a wire that went from there you zoom in here where it went from there down to there but it showed a whole lot of wire on the schematic now, this is just the opposite we had these two wires, one right here, one right here. They had to come all the way down the chassis, all the way down to where they originally hooked onto the candome resistor. But if you look on the schematic, they're just two little short wires, one here and one there. So there you go. Both sides of the equation on that. All right. Uh, there is a possibility before this is over, after I go ahead and you know, we get the radio playing, then I want to go back and readjust wires and, you know, kind of clean up the house a little bit. Last minute details. I may wind up moving these three wires behind the wires on this uh, audio output transformer. I don't know. Right now they're sitting on top. They're easy to get to, no problem. But if I run them behind it, they'll be closer to the chassis. So I don't know. Right now that's just kind of an up in the air type of thing. 
And uh, I think what I'll do, we've got everything soldered. And now we've got some resistors here that have not been soldered in yet. I think now that we've got everything connected to the resistor bank, according to our schematic, I think I'll go ahead and just solder up all these resistors. Let's do that. All right, we got them now. We got them. Boy, we got them. Everything is good to go now. The entire bank of resistors is soldered in at long last. Wow, I thought this day would never come. All right, we're going to do one more thing. We still have one more thing to do. And what we're going to do, back up here, we are going to install this capacitor right here. It is a 6 microfarad capacitor. It's rated at 300 volts, and it's C13. I don't have a 6, but I do have a 6.8, and that's what we're going to put in there. This is the negative side. See that little negative sign? It's going to go just like that. So let me get that set up and show you how we're going to put that in. The negative side of this resistor it goes to the side of the 220. You'll remember that we had a brown wire that came off of here, remember? The brown wire went all the way down, all the way around, and came across. And it went to this 220 ohm resistor, which was originally 206, but I had to put a 220 in there. But once it got to the other side of the resistor, it became orange wire. Remember that? And it went up to the center tap on the high voltage winding on the power transformer. Well, let me show you what we've got here. You'll remember, for those of you who have been keeping up with this series, you'll remember that there's the 220 ohm resistor mounted on a, on a thermal board. And we have the orange side here and the brown side here. So what do we need to do? We need to hook the negative side of the resistor, of the uh, capacitor, the electrolytic. It has to go to the, this side of the resistor, which is the brown. So the negative will go here. Let me see if I've even got a hole there. I might even have a hole there I can use. Yes, I do. Look at there. Now the other side, where does the positive go? All right, the positive side of the capacitor goes up, 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 connects into this red mess that we did in the last segment, or you know, a couple of segments ago, and it will go up and connect all the way up. We can connect it to the pin number three on the IF amplifier tube to 35. Pin number three will take me right down to the positive of that capacitor. Well, let's see if we can find pin number three. Let me get this wire out of the way. Now this is the IF amplifier. It says IF. This time I got it right. And there's pin three. One, two, three. Oh my goodness. Do you see what I see? A terminal strip right there. All we have to do, as far as I can tell, is run this thing over to an existing tab. Right like that. I'll probably put a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, tubing on there to protect it so it won't short out. And then all we have to do is run a wire from here down to pin 3. That's it. See how easy that was? Solder it to the brown wire, over to a terminal strip, the positive goes, and then from there down to pin 3 on the IF amplifier, 35 tube. I mean, it just doesn't get any... I don't know how I can make it any more simple. I'll have to take a wire, strip it with both ends, and solder it from here to there. That's it. Let me get that done and show you what it looks like. And like I said, she is now soldered in to where I can also read the, you know, the side of the uh, capacitor so I know what's on there. The negative is soldered here. Let me see if I can get a little focus here. All right, the negative is soldered here. The positive here just to a terminal, that's all, then the wire run down to pin 3 on that IF amplifier tube. Nothing to it, piece of cake. All right, let's go ahead and color in some orange. We, we need. Okay, first we're going to start, I think. I want to get that electrolytic in. That makes me kind of feel good. We'll put the old electrolytic in. Yes, that baby is in. Okay. And we connected this side of the volume control. Yes, we did and this side of the volume control. Just that little tiny piece. 
right there was that great big long wire. Isn't that amazing? That little tiny thing on the schematic. Let me see. I think we've got just about everything else taken care of today. Soldered all of our uh, resistor bank up. I don't think there's anything else that we covered that I need to put orange on. I think I got it all. I guess I could just go ahead and put it right through the old volume control. What the heck, okay? Well, I think that's enough for today. I think we've learned quite a bit, or at least you got to watch me do quite a bit. But I do have a question for everybody that's been following this uh, you know, series right from the beginning. I'm getting a lot of people saying, you know, yeah, this is, it, it looks, it's, it's a lot easier to me now. It makes more sense to me now. But here's the question. Do you think you can take a schematic like this and, and go through it like I've done so far and figure it out on your own? I mean, we've gone detail by detail, line by line, junction by junction, solder point by solder point. Can you do it? Do you think you could take a, you know, a basic schematic, which is what this is here? It's nothing heavy. It's nothing that uh, is really super confusing. You think you can do that? If so, I need you to tell me. You know, Have you learned enough to be able to do that? If I were to hand you this schematic right now and hand you this radio chassis right now, could you finish it? Could you finish this area over here? Could you finish this area over here? And uh, could you put the pieces and parts on the top of the chassis and connect all the wires up? They go up through the bottom of the chassis, you know, up through the holes and everything. It's all the same. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. Just following a wire from point A to point B. Let me know. That's it for now, guys. Until next time, this is John. Well, we can't end the video now because I have made a mistake. I made a mistake. Well, how do I know I made a mistake? Because I double checked and triple checked. Remember I told you that many times? Double check and triple checked. What's the mistake? Right here, we installed that 500K resistor and we put it between these two uh, resistors on our resistor bank, which would be right here. This is the 500K resistor. We have it installed between these two resistors. That is correct. This end of that resistor is correct. Now the other end is supposed to go to pin 2 of the ABC tube, okay, which is the 24 tube. Pin 2 is where the other end goes. Well, the I got the other end connected not to the ABC tube down here. I've got it connected <laughs> to the audio output tube. Oh man, what pin on the audio output tube? Pin 1, pin 2. Pin 3. I've got it connected to pin 3 on the 47 tube, the audio out. And it's supposed to be connected down here to pin 2, which is right there. That pin right there. Well, son of a gun, there has to be a reason why I have this 500K. Excuse me, I got a burp beer. I'm, I'm drinking some uh, root beer. But there has to be a a reason I have the other end of a 500k resistor connected to pin 3 on the audio output tube. Why is that? Essentially what I'm going to have to do is disconnect it from here and move it down to this right there, that pin right there. That solves the whole problem. However, the question remains, why did I have it hooked there to pin 3 of the audio output tube? Well, let's take a look at the schematic. Hmm. Here's our 47 tube, and here's pin 3, which is the control grid. Comes up, comes over, son of a gun. There's another 500K resistor, and I've got it down here. I don't show it completely in. It's, uh, it stops right there. So what happened was I got the two 500K resistors mixed up thinking that this one uh, was the one that was supposed to go here to the center between these two resistors. Not the case. We're going to go ahead and fix this. And then in the next video, we'll go ahead and hook a 500K to this one and run it on down 
all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way across, all the way across. We'll eventually hook it to this bank of, of capacitors here at first. But, for, I mean, uh, you know, I will get to that. But first, I want to bring it over on the other side of that 220 and hook it into the orange wire that runs over to the center tap on the high voltage winding, okay? And once we get that connected in, we'll have a place where we can actually connect another electrolytic. So that's the egregious error. I will go ahead and correct that before the next video, and we will pick it up at that point.